do a quick intro of myself. Uh, so uh, I have around uh, nine years of uh, experience in the uh, IGA tools or the IAM tools. Worked on access management side uh, in the initial uh, start of my career, and then uh, started with Oracle Identity Manager as well. So I have sound experience on Savian. For the past five years, I've been uh, working as an architect level uh, person for Savian in various organizations. And I've designed and implemented uh, multiple uh, Savian projects, be it in different sectors, not just restricted to one one particular uh, sector, be it healthcare, banking, finance, and uh, industrial sectors. Yeah, I've trained multiple people and I've developed multiple teams on saving projects in different organizations. Uh, yeah, but my focus is more uh, on the implementation of the saving uh, projects with uh, very uh, standardized models and then uh, following the industry best practice. So, and, and I do have uh, good uh, knowledge on the scripting languages, bit shell, partial, and uh, yeah, Ansible is kind of a DevOps. Uh, scripting so it's used in uh, different uh, devops uh, implementations and i'm certified savient uh, professional as well so we'll discuss this uh, these basic concepts uh, the savient basics and then we'll get into the uh, identity warehouse concept and then we'll slowly discuss uh, access request system so yeah uh, so savient basics first thing to start uh, i think savient is the uh, not I think, Savient is the only uh, matured cloud IGA tool in the market today. There are a lot of other tools which are there in the market, uh, which are not, uh, which are good when it comes to on-premise, uh, be it SailPoint, Oracle, uh, NetIQ. Uh, these are few legacy tools and SailPoint is the on-premise uh, tool. But when it comes to cloud, right, I think from the past five years, we see that uh, Savient has been uh, really doing good in the market. And the demand has been increasing uh, day by day for Savient. So coming to what what is special, what is that special thing on Savient? So uh, having an experience of working on on-premise tools and then me working for the past four years on uh, Savient, right, I think uh, I would be the uh, right guy to actually explain how how uh, how it makes easy for a customer or a client when they're working on uh, saving projects especially even when it comes to the user friendliness that saving has right it's, it's really appreciated to the tool uh, the way it has been built so thing is uh, saving has everything on one ui that's just one ui whereas if you compare with other tools in the market right it, it's not just one ui you have to access a database somewhere you have to do some actions on an admin console or on self-service console so different consoles are there but save and it's all embedded into one single ui and any operation that you do any configurations that you do it's all save uh, on that particular ui and one more thing uh, the beauty of save Int is you don't really have to do a lot of coding unlike other iga tools in the market it's just the configurations and stuff and you need to know how well you can make use of this ui that you see so it's more of a configuration and less coding coding is there but it's a very very tiny part that you have in savient and then there are different modules we will just focus on two modules today so before that there are some critical concepts that are there uh, within savient so when it comes to iga right it's, it's all about uh, four to five different critical concepts uh, which has uh, high significance so one is the jml process which is joiners movers and leavers which is like pretty basic in any organization so you have a joiner you have a mover you have a lever so any new hire that is joining the company right we consider that user as a so let's say i'm getting onboarded into a new company so i'm considered as a joiner so there is a process uh, embedded in savient or any other iga tool which should follow certain protocols. So there are there are some pre-accesses that needs to be given. So there will be a set of predefined accounts or applications that you might access on your first day. So for example, right? So anyone uh, anyone who is joining an organization, so it's, it's by default you need to be able to access your uh, uh, Microsoft Teams or Skype or your Outlook. So those are 
basic accesses. We call it birthright accesses in, in any IGA terminology. So these birthright accesses are applicable to any joiner in that organization. So that is the first step. So when it comes to mover process, right? So movers are nothing but if there are any internal transfers within the organization. So let's say I got promoted or one of my associate is moving from one department to other department, then it comes under mover process. So there will be certain actions that will be taken when this mover process is happening. So one certain actions, we call it access reviews, certifications, or campaigns. It's, it's all the same terminology, but I'm just, when I say access reviews, right, the name itself says access reviews. So any access that user has before the transfer. So let's say I moved from IT department to InfoSec department. So when I move from IT department to InfoSec department, right? So there are certain accesses which I might not require when I'm moved to InfoSec. So let's say I'm accessing X application. So when I'm part of IT, IT department, yeah, definitely I need to access that X application. But when I move to InfoSec, right, I might not need access to X, but I need access to Y application. So I have to make sure in the IGA system that I should revoke. So when I say revoke, it's removing the access on the X application. So this actions, so there will be set of actions. This is just one example that I'm giving. But there are set of actions which needs to be taken care of and you have to basically remove those accesses in terms of movers and there might be other processes as well within the system. So this is a mover scenario. There is a internal transfer. And then there comes a lever process, which is basically we call it terminations in, in different uh, organizations. So terminations is nothing but, yeah, you have uh, put down your... So there are different scenarios in terminations, but I'm not, I'm not step into the details. For now, at, at basic level, right, so any, any user leaving the organization, serving notice period. So termination comes into picture on the last day of that user. So there are different terminations, immediate terminations, voluntary terminations, involuntary terminations. So different things are there. Uh, but yeah, so basically terminations means you have to make sure or the IGA system, which is salient over here, should make sure you remove all these access. So in this JML process, right, how effective is salient? So salient has different concepts. Uh, we call them policies. We call them rules. We call them analytics. So those are in detail concepts. But at high level, right, these policies and rules and uh, the concepts, right, make it very easy for, for any customer or for any implementer who is implementing Savient to streamline all these processes in, in an automated fashion where you really not worry about doing a lot of manual work, making sure you check what's happening, joiner has got the accesses or not, whether movers access has been removed properly or not. And when it comes to lever, whether all the accesses and accounts and be it any application that user is accessing, right? We need to make sure he should not have access after the last day of, after his last working. So these things are per perfectly monitored and uh, accurately implemented in Savior. So you you can see what's happening. You can, you can uh, for auditing purpose, right, you can generate a lot of reports, you can send it to yourself and see, okay, whether all these accesses has been removed or not for any determination. So that's at high level uh, when it comes to uh, using Savient uh, functionalities to um, attain or uh, to achieve the JML workflows. Then apart from JML, there are few more concepts uh, and one, one uh, important concept is the connections where we where we discuss about developing uh, identity warehouse. So identity warehouse is nothing but so any application, right? So let's say I'm, I'm working uh, for an organization and for my work uh, related uh, tasks, right? I need to access an application. So how do I do that? So normally what we do is we either reach out to the application owner. So when I say the application owner, right, it's the team or the person who manages that application, basically an admin who does that. So normally what we do in any, uh, non, I mean, in, in any regular organization, right, you go, you look for a place where you log a ticket. So this is very common. So you'll have different ITSM tools. So when I say ITSM tools, uh, 
the service now and different dietitian tools are there in the market so what you basically do is you go you log a ticket and then uh, once you log a ticket right so some admin will come uh, pick up that ticket and he will give you that access this is a similar scenario where you see in most of the organizations and uh, when it comes to identity warehouse and this concept right so how i'm correlating this is I don't want this ticketing process. I do. I, I do want to have some track where I log a request and get it done. But I don't want someone going manually picking that ticket and then working on that and providing some access to me and and someone sending out an email saying. So there is a lot of manual process in place when it comes to these ideas of tools. So Savient makes sure this complete system is automated. So when it comes to uh, the connector, so developing identity warehouse is nothing, but there's a concept called connections in Savian. So connection, the name itself says, right? I have to connect to some system from Savient. So Savient is, so we, we call IGA term Savient as the authorized repository. So authorized repository means any data for, for an user. So let's say when I discussed about the joiner process, right? So I get this data from a HRMS source. It, when I say HRMS source, right, it is coming from the HRs. So HRs might have an application or they might manually enter the data. It depends. But any data that is coming from HRMS will be entered into Savient. And once I have this data in Savient for any user, right, this is for user. So we call these users as identities. That's how the convention or the terminology is. So these identities will be in Savient. And let's say you have to access any application. You go to Savient and you will request for that application. So when I'm requesting, what exactly happens in the backend? So that's where Identity Warehouse comes into picture. So user will not be able to see anything. He'll, he'll just see a home page. He'll see something called uh, request access. He'll go to that request access style. And then he'll just request for the application that is required. And then he will get the access over there. But then how does Savient make sure it is giving that particular access to that application when user is requesting? So there is at the back end, once you request and let's say it needs your manager approval or it needs some application owner approval, that will be taken care by different set of processes that we have in Savient. But the core process that runs is the connection concept, whereas what we will discuss about identity warehouse. So in the connections, so inside the connections, right? So there is a connection for each application. That's how it works. So let's say I have to connect to X application. I need to have some credentials first. I need to be authorized to access that application. So there will be a service account or generic account. So different names are there. So it's nothing but a, 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 a user account that is there on that particular system, which is authorized to log in over that mission. So it's it's simple. Like if I have to log into Gmail or Amazon, whatever it is, right? I need to have an access to that particular. You basically register for it. You sign in. You set your password before you log in, right? So these basic preliminary steps. So you need to have it again. See, different. So uh, let's let's say, take an example of Amazon. So, we have a different view as an end user to Amazon and there might be admins or there might be the support guys who might have access to view what orders you have done on Amazon and all these things. So they are admins basically. Similarly, in this particular piece, right? So there, there are approvals required from the admins who are accessing that application. And once these things are done, on the connection, when we discuss, right, there is... Uh, something called credentials yeah that's what i was discussing so credentials is what you need to have and then you design a connection you create a connection you configure these credentials and there are a set of uh, jsons so when i say json is nothing but a format uh, the syntax that savient has throughout the system so you have to give some parameters on savient where it will make it uh, where it will send your details that it has so as i told you right your details come from hrms it is stored in savient from savient these details are passed on to that application so what does exactly savient doing here for me like you can think 
okay i can i can. same thing is pro followed on the itsm but only thing is there is a manual process where a person is picking all your details and doing it okay that that's the only difference but if you see at a broader perspective right let's say there are 100 plus applications in the organizations so there will be 100 tickets logged for all these applications and some person or an admin should go pick up and do this activity which is really a tedious process but the thing is if you automate this if you have all these connections at once built in savient configured in savient you can automate this whole process and, and there is a lot of seamless experience that you will see be it the user level or the persons who are implementing savient or managing the savient tool in that organization right they will have a seamless experience actually so again it's it's even uh, on the other good note right you you definitely have uh, a proper track for auditing where you will see what what accesses are being requested and what exactly happens when an approval or manager is approving that request so you can even configure email so let's say i'm requesting for that application i'll get an email saying okay this person has requested for so and so application and then my manager will get an email saying okay you are a reportee who's reporting to you in the organization has requested for so and so application for the x application you need to approve it it will, it will give him two options approve or reject whether you need that access he will approve it if you need that access if it does not require that access they will just reject it so there is a proper flow embedded within savian and these connections play a major and significant role so anything that you have to do in savian you need that so there are two uh, major uh, concepts or terminologies it, it's not respect to with respect to savian but for any iga tool right there are two concepts one is reconciliation one is provisioning so reconciliation is nothing but fetching the data from the application we call them target applications i'll, I'll discuss what is target application so there are two types of applications target and trusted so we'll discuss what is trusted we'll discuss what is target so before that yeah so i need to get the data from that particular application be target or trusted or whatever it is so this process of fetching the data or importing the data that's what we call uh, that's the correct way of calling it so importing the data from an application is called reconciliation so if it is imported from target application so we just call it as target reconciliation if it is imported from trusted we call it trusted reconciliation so what exactly is target reconciliation what is trusted reconciliation trusted is nothing but your hrms sources as i discussed earlier right so if you are importing any data join us and for the joiners any new hires and when when you receive that data from an hrms application right so the different applications in the market be it workday people's of uh, oracle hcm so a lot of applications are there so if you are fetching sap as well so sap also has a hr system it's a database so if you are fetching the data from these applications then it's a, it's called as trusted reconciliation so the hrs any data that you get from hr right it's an authorized uh, information i would say because yeah that that's where your uh, uh, first name last name for example and then your uh, uh, department your job title all these things are very legit that come when it comes from hr right so because that that's when that's the source of information so we call it trusted source as well so if you are importing the data from this hrms then we call it trusted uh, reconciliation now what is target reconciliation so any application where you are sending that details or it, it depends on you basically so as i told you right if a user has to access x application you need to do some access from savian so you have providing that access with your details so it's it's more of like uh, to mention at a basic level right so you create your google account you don't go to gmail you go you don't go to um, what is that google photos you don't go to google meet you don't create separate account you just create google account and you have all all these so ars is basically uh, the login page so anyone who logs into savient right you will by default see this ars page in savient 
and then you will have a lot of tiles over there so a lot of options over there to request access and manage your access you can see your request history and you can see uh, the request approvals which are pending so let's say you log the request and, and for some application access you can see with whom it is pending whether your manager has approved or not okay if it has if it has been approved by your manager then what's the next level of approval so all these structure and, and uh, the line items can is visible on your ars page also let's say you are a manager so manager will be able to see additional options on the home page so manager can request for his report is so let's say i'm joining the organization tomorrow so my manager today has to request for some predefined set of accesses which might be requ required for me on my day of joining so this option will be given to the managers so let's say there are auditors who want to review the accesses so they will have different options and let's say there are admins who can basically view all the options and all the tiles on that particular application page so this is how the ars ui will look and now if we discuss a little more in detail right so let's say i'm requesting for access request uh, for some xyz application now how do i configure for some users so let's say there are contractors and there are employees so these are two basic employee types in any organization or with any client that you are working so there will be employees there will be contractors so let's say employees have to see only certain set of applications or let's say employees have to see all the applications or they should be able to request for any application that is there on save it and there are contractors who should not be able to request for some critical applications which are strictly restricted to employees so there is a big difference here right so you are restricting the contractors from requesting the access it's it's really a nice concept basically it's not about you making all the applications visible when when any user is requesting be it employee or contractor and let's say contractor is requesting for that application which he should not have access to so in that case right it goes for approval definitely the manager or the next level of approvers right they will reject that access so i, I don't want contractors at first place to request for any of these applications so for that purpose what we are doing over here is i am restricting that at first level itself so any contractor logging into savient he will just be able to look at those applications which he should request for so these set of configurations can be done on savient so it's a basic one of the basic example that i am giving over here where you can restrict or limit the visibility on the ui so and and you can even change the brandings on the access request page so let's say you're working for a client which is a bank and it has a logo right you can modify this logo so you can change the color coding and again there is a, there are certain limitations over here which are limited so you can do all these actions and let's say you can even manage creating accesses or creating uh, different groups so I'll, I'll tell you what groups and things are in when we discuss in detail but for now we'll just request restrict this to managing certain groups and access within the system so that's a, a brief explanation on ars system it's more about handling your requests limiting the accesses who should request what and uh, who which department should uh, so let's say there are different departments in your organization right for example the infosec so it people department it department people should be able to request only for certain set of accesses in even within the application this is more of a granular level that i am discussing so let's say there is x application and within that x application there are 5 or 10 11 permissions but i want it department to request only for 3 or 4 permissions so this is at a granular more granular level that we configure on ars page so that's about the basics what we do with the identity warehouse where we import the data thing and ars system is is basically the uh, home page that you see on save it so yeah so understanding save concepts basics of save and done things that is uh, the basic agenda over here and then understanding the modules and features of savient right so there are different uh, modules of savient so one is 
connections which i discussed just now so connections again comes under identity repository so there is a module called admin module uh, so i am going at parent level so parent level you will see a module called admin vault module which will have different sub modules under it so under admin module there is a sub module called identity repository and again under identity repository there are different sections over here one is connections one is security systems one is endpoint there is roles there is entitlements accounts so we can let us discuss what each subsection means on savient on this module but at high level identity repository is more of your identity which is user that comes from hrms and there are accounts so accounts are nothing but the account that you will have in that application so let's say i have access to x application my account will be there in that x application so your account will be mapped to the user in savient so these two things are very important what is a user what is an account user is the user profile or the identity that you have in savient that is user now using this user details you are creating your account or you are having this account in the target so when i say target it is the application so that x application which has your user information it's called an account so this account is mapped to the user so what exactly will happen is there will be one user in savient and he will have n number of accounts so there might be 10 application accounts there might be 11 application it depends whichever user is requesting so this is accounts users likewise there are entitlements and different things so again there is policies so the so identity repository policies salient roles uh, sso configurations admin configuration so all these comes under admin module so it's a very critical module uh, admin module and then there is something called intelligence module this is uh, a very uh, sophisticated concept on savient it's it's powered by ai as well so analytics is a very important model so if they call it intelligence module it's nothing but analytics that you have on savient so savient has this analytics module and you can configure it for reports for various purposes within within uh, analytics so thing is intelligence module purely deals with analytics and, and then you have certifications where you do a lot of uh, access reviews over there so basically certifications are nothing but let's say you have set of uh, application access so i want my manager to review my access that is there on that particular application or the whole accesses that i have on particular uh, on that particular application so there are different type of certifications one is a user manager there is entitlement owner there is application owner so different set of applications are there so this is nothing but a campaign module so there is admin module there is intelligence module there is admin module so these three are very critical modules there is control center module which is not really uh, which is really used for uh, dashboards and the ui stuff not really on the technical aspect and there is svd segregation of duties which is again a very uh, significant uh, concept that uh, we have on savient so svds are nothing but who should have what accesses based on uh, so let's say i belong to it department and if i am having certain accesses that i do not need to have then it will get captured on svds so the name itself says right segregation of duties so you have to segregate the accesses that you need to have based on the duties or responsibilities that you have within your organization so these are at high level the different modules and features that you will see on savient or you'll be working on savient so that's your plan and yeah we will also discuss different business use cases that are involved with savian so we'll we'll have different set of use cases for each module covered in this uh, course yeah i i have also have an add on topics which are uh, even for, which are not part of this course there is a one one really important and critical uh, concept called saf to sav roles saf to sav is nothing but savian to savian roles so you need to know how how 
who need to have what access to your saving DUI and what actions can be performed and the level of restrictions that can be done on uh, saving using the saving to saving roles, right? Because a lot of clients and organizations will have this requirement saying that we have auditors, we have uh, managers and we have subset of managers who are uh, managers to contractors and they need to see uh, or uh, their visibility should be minimal or few visibilities should be maximized. So all these things, uh, what all you see on the UI, right, the single UI that Savient has, that restrictions and limitations are controlled using Savient to Savient tools. That, that's at high level. And then there is SAP, SAP to SAP integration. So Savient to Savient integration is not really the Savient to Savient tool. It's, it's basically, if I have to perform some operations for the users that I have, the identities that we have uh, on Savient, so you can use this SAP. So it's a connection, basically. SAP to SAP integration is nothing but a connection. So it is within Savient to Savient. If you have to make some updates to the user, you make use of Savient to Savient integration. This is basically more of a, a, when you when you have custom use cases, then then this this comes into picture. Yeah, and then we will go through a lot of business use cases. So I have prepared this plan in a very uh, advanced manner. So if you let's say this is this is basically covering uh, any any basic implementations that you have on Savient. So let's say you already have an IGA system for a client, and you have to do a migration. So we will discuss what type of use cases or what type of scenarios you will have to do with different modules. So if you see, right, migrating from current IGA tool to save and IGA tool. So we, we will cover what will be the basic stuff over there, what the basic use cases over there. And then you will see what policies by default needs to be configured, what type of workflows might be required, and certifications in, in specific, right? Definitely, when you're migrating, you, when you're shifting all this data of accesses and things to a newer tool from your previous tool, IGA tool, you definitely have to do user access reviews just to make sure everything is properly migrated and such things. And then there is a Greenfield implementation project. So Greenfield is about, there is no IGA system. It's, it's all manual work that is going on and how do you uh, implement the save and IGA. So it's not about implementing save and IGA. It's about how well you are doing it, following the uh, standard processes that are in place and, and the best suggested options that you have to implement is what will be a different value add-on when you work on uh, projects having that particular approach. Then configuring birth rate accesses, it's, it's a very uh, basic scenario that you have to cover on your joiner process, which I explained earlier. And then configuring access requests, that's, that's what we discussed on the ARS page. And then configuring workflows, like who should approve what accesses at what time. So that is about workflows. So this in detail, we will have like what are those business use cases, how it is. So we'll have each one, one, one particular uh, use case for you to understand for workflows, policies, certifications, and all these things. Yeah. So one thing what I want to uh, uh, communicate over here is you will. So there are different certifications uh, for Savian. So there is L hundred, L two hundred. So this particular uh, courses solely covered for saving L100. So you will definitely, once you finish this, right, you will get to know what are the concepts, uh, what you, you are eligible to the same level of training that is given on saving L100. Right? Actually, I can tell that this is even little bit advanced than you what you get on L100. You will cover those concepts, but apart from that, you will also see some business use cases, which you don't really get on save and L100. It's a predefined set of modules and training that is there. But here we are covering a little bit of advanced level to that. And definitely save and L100 is sufficient enough for you to implement the foundation phase of any project. That is something which we can uh, definitely cover in this course. Okay. I think that's pretty much that we have for today. And yeah, we can also have the uh, mock interview sessions like 
what what type of questions you might be asked or what information is required uh, for for when you cover this l100 and when you do this do those use cases right so you will definitely be confident enough to crack the interviews at least and then definitely you will get a better understanding on the tool we will also get to know what what's the uh, level of knowledge that you have gained after the training so we'll add those interview questions whichever uh, interview questions might be asked or might be discussed based on the use cases that you have worked.